Yeah, okay, nice. Okay, so let me do a quick intro and we're good to go. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to Disabilities Redefined with Dr. Wagner. I am Truett Wagner, and we are here with a very special young lady, Sarah Ferguson, who is the reigning Miss Wheelchair North Carolina USA. Did I get it right? Yes. <laughs> That's a Miss Wheelchair North Carolina USA, because USA always goes after North Carolina. Okay, that would make sense. And then second runner-up to Miss Wheelchair USA. Congratulations. I haven't seen you since the pageant, but it was a very exciting night. Thank you. Yes, it was wonderful. So when we were at the pageant, you showed me your visual, your visual board. Um, I thought it was so sweet uh, and very informative. What was your platform and uh, what what was your message with the visual, the, the visual board that, that I saw? So my platform um, is Access for All, which is accessibility and inclusivity in higher education. Um, I am a college student living with a disability, so it is really extremely close to my heart and important to talk about accessibility and inclusivity in higher education. Um, there, we've come a long way since the passing of the ADA in 504, but there's still a lot further to go with a lot of things um, that I've found. And so I really wanted to show that while also showing a lot about me um, and kind of what I do as a college student living with a disability. So like I had some of my um, things for my major and some of my art and um, I'm in the marching band at my university, which is huge. So that was kind of the big central part of it. Yes, I remember those pictures. Now, what, what university, uh, uh, where do you go to school? So I go to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. No, is that Tar Heels? Is that the, is that the Tar Heel yes. territory? <laughs> <laughs> that beautiful shade of blue that everybody loves across the country. Yes, that's great. <laughs> so what is it like, in a nutshell, what is it like being a, a very successful student? And what is your major? Um, so I'm a biology and neuroscience double major, and I have a studio arts minor. Perfect. And what is the ultimate career goal? Um, I want to go into research, specifically in regenerative medicine and neurodegenerative diseases. Excellent. Nice. Nice. So what is it like being an active, successful student on an active, thriving campus like the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, uh, as a student in a wheelchair? It's a lot different, I think, than I expected. There's so much of it that's just like any other student that's wonderful, especially when interacting with a lot of peers where you're seen as, you know, just another one of the guys, especially like in marching band, everybody else just sees me as another alto sex, like they're just like, ah, oh, yeah, you know, that's Sarah. We're going to go throw her up in the stands. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go whip her out for pregame. <laughs> um, but then there's the other aspects where it's at the beginning of the semester, especially the nerves of I need to plan my routes to all my classes. And even as a senior, oh, I've not been in this building before. I've not been in this auditorium before. Is there going to be an accessible desk for me in here. I need to submit the form telling them that I need accessible seating. Um, it was overwhelming my first year. I had no idea what to do, especially because my first year was COVID, which flipped everything online. So my sophomore year, I had absolutely no idea what I was doing and everyone expected you to know what you're doing. Um, but I feel like now as a senior, I'm like, okay, I got this. I can plan my routes to classes, um, but it's it's wonderful. Um, it has its quirks. Well, you are a senior, so now do you know already what's gonna happen next year? Are you you already applying for graduate school? Or you, you, you've got work 
internships? Like, what, what, what would be the next uh, step in the, in the educational trajectory? So I'm planning on taking a fifth year of undergrad next year um, in order to be able to do undergrad research before going into grad school. Okay, so you'll just stay right there at, at University of North Carolina? Yes. Okay, and take courses or work as a research assistant? Um, I'll do courses and then do um, an internship probably. Hopefully, <laughs> there's a couple labs that I really want to get into. Nice. I'm really hoping some spots open up. Nice, nice. Wow, that's great. Well, can, good luck with that. I'm, I'm as, as a, you know, Sarah, I am a career, you know, I'm a career counselor here at the City University of New York for disabled students. So I'm loving this conversation, but I need, <laughs> I need to get back to what I'm supposed to be doing with this role in my life, and that's interviewing you about being a beauty queen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, okay. And we don't have an edited show now, so I can't edit all <laughs> out. So let me get back to some questions that we had planned to ask you. What was it like in Miss Wheelchair USA? Uh, and we do want to uh, say, it is Miss, M-S, and that's something that I love about um, Miss Wheelchair USA because it's so multi-generational. So did you appreciate that? Because you were one of the youngest ones in, 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 you know, competing, but there were also, you know, some of the ambassadors are much older. Uh, so some of the contestants were much older. So did you, was that something that you did appreciate about um, Miss Wheelchair USA and, and the people you got to know for that week? Yes, I was the baby. I was the youngest. <laughs> Twenty-two. Uh, uh, okay, I'll I was be, trying, be... Sarah. I was trying to be nice. I didn't want. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be twenty-three in eleven days. <laughs> Congrats. It was. It was wonderful. I that was one of my favorite parts. I loved that because I loved seeing women from so many different walks of life in so many different stages of life because especially being a woman with a disability and from like my hometown in North Carolina is tiny and I grew up never seeing a young person with a disability never really seeing much of anybody that is a wheelchair user and even here at my university, you don't come across very many wheelchair users on campus. It's mm -hmm. very small and we all know each other and we're all the same age. And I constantly am at that point where I'm like, am I going to be able to be in a relationship with someone? Am I going to be able to have children? Am I going to like, how am I going to be able to chase a toddler around a house? <laughs> like, can I handle that kind of thing? And then I, go to Miss Butcher USA and I see some of these amazing women who are mothers and grandmothers and they're telling me about how, oh yeah, no, you'll find a way. Like, trust me, you'll, you'll rein those in. You'll, you'll move faster than them sometimes. So it was phenomenal getting to hear stories from them and being able to see that things that you think probably wasn't going to be possible suddenly you're like, look at these amazing, strong women who have blown that out of the park. Mm -hmm. Very good point. Very good point. So let's let's see. So now you were in Miss Wheelchair USA. You did quite well. Was there one deciding factor? Was what, what, was there was there something you always wanted to do? I mean, what brought you to Miss Wheelchair USA? Because I I always ask this question, and there's never one singular answer. So you being the baby, I do want to hear what is your case that that <laughs> that led you to the stage and on your first go go out go out there and got it. You you did reign in second runner up. So we want to we want to make that statement. Yes. <laughs> so growing up, I did traditional beauty pageants as a kid and until I was like 14, I think, um, when I first became disabled, I had so much problems with my self-confidence. Like, I didn't even want to go to our local Walmart with my mom. And that even became a struggle with 
wanting to go to college and wanting to go to any further point in my life because I thought that it was done because I was the kid that did track and cross country and marching band. You know, I was the kid that wanted to go out and do all these things and suddenly overnight it was gone. My self-confidence was in the toilet and my mom eventually was like, you need to figure something out and find something. And she started poking me and pestering me. And she's like, do a pageant again. And I'm like, there's no way. You do not see women in wheelchairs and pageants. She's like, well, then you should. Because you should see women in wheelchairs and pageants. And I was like, there you go. That's true. Well, you know, you got a point there. You got a point there. And so then I was looking into it and I found Miss Wheelchair USA. And I watched the year prior and I was like, this is something that I'm really interested in trying. And um, especially when I was having all the, the struggles with access issues on my campus. And that's something that I'm very vocal about on my campus and around my state and my community. That I'm like, I want to be able to spread this with as many people as possible. And this is an amazing way to get involved with both of these things. So it was, it was a lot of my mom. <laughs> she helped out a lot. Yeah, but when she was there, I, I tell her I said hello, and uh, I'm, I'm thinking about her. But uh, yeah, but then again, you know, the final the final decision that was obviously yours, and it was obviously a very good decision. So, but you 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 hit on something because um, you know uh, we do need to see more wheelchair beauty pageants, and we also need to see more wheelchair beauty queens in pageants as well. So that is good. So would you ever consider? being in Miss North Carolina or Miss, uh, what, Miss Tar, do you have a Miss Tar Hill there? Or Miss uh, U- uh, North, University of North Carolina? I don't know what pageants you have down there, but it, would, would there be anything, I know the South, because I'm from your neighboring state there, we're pretty much neighbors. I am from um, uh, South Carolina many years ago. Uh, but um, yeah, I know that there's a lot of pageants down there, so <laughs> would you ever consider being in one? Yeah, I have some local ones on my radar um, because me and my mom have really been talking about it because it's something that I really, really want because you should. You should see more women with disabilities in these pageants because there's no reason for them not to be. And even some of them I've contacted and they'll be like, oh, no, we don't have an accessible stage and we can't provide an accessible opportunity for you. And I'm like, but women with disabilities are just as strong and beautiful and everything else as a woman without a disability. And I think that's an image that the world needs to be able to see and stories that the world needs to be able to hear. Yes. Good point. Miss Wheelchair USA is not only just beauty. You know, you have your platform and it's, 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 uh, they, they make you do a lot that week. I mean, that's, that's a solid week of work there, right? Yeah, there's a lot going on. You're doing interviews, you're doing workshops. Um, I, <laughs> every night was going back, I was in a summer class. That was the last week of my summer class. I was oh, no. doing all of my homework when I was getting back <laughs> to the hotel. Because when we finished, um, the Sunday that we left, the following Monday was a reading day, the next day was a reading day, and Tuesday was my final exam for that class. Okay. That whole time, I was, we were in the backstage, oh, and I was God. writing my final paper. <laughs> but you do a lot of work. You do interviews. um, workshops but the workshops don't really feel like work because those are a lot of fun right right it's a busy week you you need time to recover afterwards but right. it's wonderful wow. and you took a class too that this is a new one i i i we didn't know that <laughs> well what did, did you get an a a plus what did you make <laughs> i got an a yeah. i don't think it was quite an a plus okay a is still a 
very good grades. So there you go. Final question. Okay, so Miss Wheelchair USA, Miss uh, uh, Wheelchair North Carolina USA, uh, future neurologist. So I'm going to assume that soon we'll be able to put that DR in front of your name. Um, you know, it's going to happen soon enough if you're in in that field. What would you like for people to know about you that don't know you through the pageants in North Carolina, University of North Carolina, and uh, the whole nine yards? So that, that's going to be the final statement. Well, you know, if you had had someone watching this in New York City, this this show will go on YouTube, but it's seen here in New York on TV. So an audience that is new to you and uh, that wants to meet you and that's gonna love you, but don't really have an idea of who don't, they don't really have an idea of who you are. How would you how would you um, introduce yourself to them? Hmm, that one was one that really trips me up. But probably that you know I may be a woman with a visible physical disability, but that doesn't mean that I am any different than anybody else and I know that me and my roommate just had this conversation like we get we as women with disabilities get treated as objects far too often we're just objectified a lot but see me don't see my chair see me first and I feel like me and any other woman with a disability we are all perfectly capable we are wonderful and brilliant in our own ways and we are going to one wheel at a time change the world 